right, John Rick, tomorrow the morning show. Hey, uh, the World Health Organization says that the Omicron variant of the coronavirus first discovered in South Africa last week is likely to quickly spread around the globe, and it could result in severe consequences. We got the one and only Dr. MJ Collier uh, on with us this morning, uh, letting you know what you need to you know, know and um, how we should prepare going into the winter month. Dr. Collier, good morning. Good morning, Ricky Smiley, and thank you so much for the opportunity to clear up some of the misinformation that's already being spread about the Omicron variant. This is what they're calling a VOC, or variant of concern. And the reason they are concerned about it is because uh, the Delta variant had nine mutations on it. The Omicron variant has over 50 mutations, and at least 30 of those are on the spiked protein. Now, why is that important? Because each and every one of the vaccines that we have targets the spike proteins, and that is a question as to whether the vaccines will remain efficacious against the Omicron uh, variant. So when people are diagnosed with it, there are doctors that are treating patients that have been diagnosed with this, and they are saying that to particularly people that have been vaccinated. They're having mild symptoms. The most predominant symptom is fatigue. It's not just feeling tired, but but what we call malaise in the medical community. So it's, it's, it's super tired, or tired, more tired than you usually are, usually accompanied with some upper respiratory tract symptoms, the most common being a sore throat or a scratchy throat. And so the, the recommendation is if you're feeling not yourself for more than 24 hours, then you need to be tested. Uh, make sure that you're getting tested. And amazingly enough, the uh, PCR testing that's available is uh, confirming that disease state indirectly. They, they have to do genetic testing to to absolutely make sure that it's Omicron variant, but there are some things about the PCR test that will lead you to believe that that is the case. Up to this point, no cases diagnosed in the United States, but already found in 19 other countries, which is why they are restricting air travel, particularly from South Africa, where it was originally found. But most experts think it's already in the United States. We just haven't been able to genetically identify it to date. But uh, probably by the end of the week, we'll have our first cases identified in the U.S. So the recommendations being, one, get vaccinated. If you have had your vaccine completed, you've had two doses of the Pfizer or the Moderna, you need to get the booster dose. If you've had one dose of the Johnson & Johnson, you need to get another dose of it. Also, uh, we're going to have to go back to uh, social distancing and mask wearing in crowded conditions. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, you, you'll have... Uh, an opportunity to, to socialize a little more around Christmas, but I think in the next few weeks we're going to see some ma- major changes in recommendations as to when people are gathering because it was real loose at Thanksgiving, and I'm, I'm afraid that if people continue to do what they did at Thanksgiving, that at Christmas we're going to have super spread events all over. All right, you're on with Dr. Collier. Good morning. Me and my wife, we were late getting our second Moderna shot. We're a couple of months late getting our second Moderna shot. Are we okay to go ahead and get that shot, or should we go ahead and schedule uh, another two shots? Uh, no, you're okay to get the second shot. Uh, just a recommendation, you can get it uh, within three to four weeks of the first shot. That's the recommendation. But they found that people that are getting it months late are still getting uh, good immune responses. So uh, get the second one at this point. Plan on getting the third one as well. But don't hesitate. Uh, we have a lot of people that have gotten one shot, but whatever reason, uh, they did not get the second one. Sometimes they had side effects and they're afraid to get the second one. But remember what Dr. Kaya tells you. Take a non-sedating antihistamine. Take an anti-inflammatory such as Motrin, Advil, or Aleve, start taking it the day before you get the shot, and then that decreases the chance that you have any side effects, particularly sore arm and just fatigue and, and body aches. All right, y'all, Dr. Collier, good morning. Dr. Collier, um, I read an article that was stating uh, that, like, I think in other countries, 15% of, uh, like, healthcare workers, they are, like, COVID-resistant. I was just just wondering, since 15% of these people are are COVID-resistant, I mean, that should mean, like, 15% of the population should be, you know, COVID-resistant. You know, I just wonder what he thought about that. Well, people that are working in healthcare have a unique exposure. They're getting exposed uh, at much higher concentrations than people that are not in healthcare. But that again, this is just uh, indicating that natural immunity is there, and other countries are starting to recognize it. It's even being talked about and discussed now in the United States. They are even considering that, as far as this Omicron variant is concerned, how good is your natural immunity from having had the disease process, regardless of your vaccination status? That's one of the things they're looking at as well as whether the vaccines can continue to be efficacious against the Omicron variant. All right, John, Dr. Collier, good morning. 
Okay, so my question is, I've heard the myth that the vaccine, or even if you've had COVID, is going to be in your bodily fluids, like in your blood or in your semen or in... So I'm just curious, like, if you've been vaccinated, can it be transmitted? If somebody doesn't want to be vaccinated and they're with somebody that's been vaccinated, they're worried about something being transmitted to them through bodily fluids. <laughs> Does that make uh, sense? That is a good point. The, the The rumor is, and this is a truism, uh, the, the virus gets in your body fluid. So if you have been contaminated with the virus and have had COVID, it is in all of your body fluid, including saliva and vaginal secretions, but not the vaccine. The vaccine is not detected in your bodily fluids. That's not the way the vaccine works. So you are, unfortunately, uh, there are people that want to get immunized by telling people, well, you've had the vaccine. So uh, you know, let's swap body fluids and I can get immunized secondarily. That's not the case. So not the vaccine. These state proper can be found in body fluids and it is transmissible that way. Imagine the secretions. <laughs> well, that's some oh, fun right there. Putting them words together. Ooh, boy, boy, you know, men in the road, men in Google that back. That's how you Secret- say it. Secretions. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go to the next go. We ain't mature enough to have this conversation. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Kyle, you ain't ready. <laughs> All right, John, Dr. Kyle, good morning. I had the Pfizer first vaccination, Pfizer second vaccination. I went to get the booster shot Saturday, and a registered nurse recommended I got the Moderna. So I got the Moderna. Well, she's telling me the truth. I'm going to be okay doing it that way. She said the CDC recommended it. Uh, the CDC is recommending that regardless of which vaccine you got the first time, uh, that you get a booster with the Moderna because the Moderna is the most potent vaccine. It, it gives higher antibody levels. Uh, so if you were smart enough and lucky enough listening to Dr. Kyle, you got the Moderna out front. But if you did not, then the recommendation is that now mixing and matching them, that getting a booster with either the one that you got the first time or the Moderna. But but don't get, if you say, for instance, if you got Pfizer, don't get the Johnson & Johnson. That just makes no clinical scientific sense. So yes, the Moderna is the most potent vaccine. It is recommended that you get your booster with the Moderna, regardless of which one your original vaccinations were made with. Did that last, that last guy call, like he worked at call. the Red House? Uh-uh. <laughs> that, was, that was Dr. Rich. That was... <laughs> That was Dr. Richard Agnoy. <laughs> Pastor Richard Agnoy coming in. <laughs> Dr. Kylie Little, if I know how you can be reached. I can be reached on all social media at Ask ASK Dr. MJ. And these are the opinions of Dr. MJ Collier, not those of Ricky Smiley. The Ricky Smiley Morning Show cast or its production crew. But do your research, find out what's going on in the world, and make sure that you listen to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show for your coronavirus updates and updates about all of your health care issues.